Welcome back to Motor Learning on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to differentiate whole practice from part practice. And when we look at part practice, we're going to see some subdivisions of that, so different ways that we can do part practice. We'll see that on the next slide. So let's begin with whole practice. Whole practice, the name pretty much gives it away. It's basically where you practice the whole skill in its entirety. It doesn't matter how long the skill is, whether it's short or long duration. It doesn't matter if it's discrete, if it's serial. You're basically practicing the whole skill. Okay? Uh, so for example, if you had a five-act play, let's say theater, five-act play, whole practice would basically be going through all five acts in order. It's the whole thing. Okay. Now, generally, when you do whole practice, or at least when you want to do it, it's for activities, so motor tasks, that have low complexity. So they have few parts. And by that, we mean discrete tasks. Okay. Um, so I'll give you an example of a low complexity task. Here's Rocky Balboa from the original Rocky movie. Here he's just throwing a jab. Okay. That's all he's doing. Um, I would argue that a jab is probably the simplest punch that you could do in boxing. Um, there's not a lot to it, and it's definitely a discrete task. Okay, um, I can't really think of any ways that you would break down the jab into individual subparts. So there's no way that you could split the jab into, into different parts. It's just one low complexity skill, one discrete skill. And that being said, it's also a high organization skill, meaning that because you can't break a jab, let's say, into little bitty parts, subparts of a jab, let's say, um, all, the, all those things are tightly interwound together. So you can't break it up. So a jab would be a really good example of a motor skill that you'd want to practice with whole practice. Okay? You're going to practice the whole skill. You're not going to break it up. Okay? And so whole practice is best left for skills that have low complexity and high organization. In contrast, part practice is done when you have a skill that has high complexity, meaning it has multiple parts. And having multiple parts, that means it's going to have a lower organization, meaning you can basically isolate the different parts of the motor task and do them independently of one another. Okay? In other words, you can practice different parts of that skill. So before I use this example, let's think about that five-act play example. Okay? A five-act play, yeah, you could run through the whole thing, but you could choose to practice uh, act two, right? Or you could practice act four. You don't have to practice the entire program all at once. So that would be an example where you could do part practice. So the key is you have to have multiple parts, at least two, that you can isolate from one another. And that being said, a serial task is one uh, type of task where it would be good to do part practice. Okay? So here's an example of a serial task. It only has two major parts to it. It's called a clean and jerk. I'm going to go ahead and play this video. And what you're going to notice is this first part, all she's doing is clearing the bar off of the ground and basically going to be supporting it roughly at the level of the shoulders. That component of the motor skill is called the clean, and if you do it in isolation, it's called a hang clean. Okay? And there's going to be a pause there. And then the second part of it is where she's going to jerk the bar up to the top, and that itself is separate from the hang clean. And so my question to you is, is this a serial task? Yes, it is. It's serial because you have more than one step. Uh, order matters. You can't jerk the bar up unless you've already cleaned it. So hang clean has to come first and then the jerk. So order matters. It's at least two parts and it has a defined beginning and end. So this is definitely a short one, but it's still a serial task. Okay. So my question to you is this. Can you perform the clean part of this, which is usually called a hang clean, can you do that without doing the jerk? Well, the answer is, of course, yes. Just have the bar on the ground and clean it up and just then put it back down. Of course, you can do a hang clean by itself. You don't actually have to do the jerk that follows it. The next question would be, could you do the jerk by itself? Well, absolutely. How could you do that? Well, you just start with the bar uh, suspended on a rack. So it's already elevated. So just kind of put it into the position that she has it right here. Um, take it off of the rack, jerk it up. And so if let's say you practice the hang clean by itself, that would be part practice because you're only practicing one part of it. 
If you practice the jerk by itself, you'd also be doing part practice. Now one thing I will say about part practice is for tasks that have this a higher complexity where you need to be able to do multiple parts of the motor skill, it is good to do part practice, but in the end you do need to bring it all back together and do the whole practice, do the entire thing. But when you have tasks that have multiple parts, part practice can be very beneficial. Because let's be honest, if you were trying to do this whole thing, it doesn't matter if you can jerk up an infinite amount of weight. If you can't clean it first, doesn't do you any good. You have to be able to do the clean first and then jerk the bar upwards. So whole practice, you practice the whole skill and it's usually done for very low complexity movements like discrete tasks, like a jab, as you see here. Part practice is done when you can isolate different parts of the movement and practice those parts independently of one another. Like you could practice the hang clean separately from the jerk, but then it's always good to bring those parts back together and do the whole skill. Because in real life, if you were in an Olympic lifting competition, you're going to have to do the whole skill. So it might, you might as well bring it back and practice the whole thing in the end anyway. Okay. Now back to part practice. There's a few other pieces here that we need to talk about, um, and those are different ways to do part practice. We have fractionization, segmentation, and simplification. The type of part practice I just described is what most people think of when they think of part practice. It's what's called segmentation. Now by definition, this is separating a skill into parts and practicing those parts so after one part is practiced, it's practiced with the next part. Okay. So for example, we segmented this movement, the clean and jerk, into two separate movements. Okay. I practiced the hang clean separately from the entire movement. That's a type of segmentation at part practice because I'm only practicing one segment. And also segmentation is valid when you have multiple movements that occur in chronological sequence. For example, the hang clean happens before the jerk in sequence. Okay. Uh, the next one, which is pretty straightforward, is simplification. This one actually kind of obvious. If you want to do simplification, you're just going to reduce the difficulty of different parts. So for example, you could reduce the weight, or if something is a, a speed type of activity, reduce the speed. Now most likely, if you were going to try and simplify this movement, you would just decrease the weight. Okay? That would obviously be a simplification, it would make it easier. Okay. And actually, you might want to, in some cases, simplify this movement by lowering the weight, because in a movement like this, if you're doing it with incorrect form, you can actually hurt yourself, you could cause injury, but also, if you have correct form, it's going to maximize your efficiency at doing this movement. Form is really key with this movement. Okay, um, That's a, another point. But the point is, is simplification, just lower the weight, lower the speed, do something to make the movement easier. That's a type of part practice. The other kind is a little bit more rare. This is called fractionization. And this is applicable when you have asymmetric limb coordination. In other words, the left hand, let's say, is doing something different than the right. And a really good example of this is basically any string instrument, violin, viola, cello, double bass, guitar. Like if you're playing the guitar and you're right-handed, normally your left hand it has different fingers on different strings so that you can get different chords or different notes. And then your right hand has the, has the pick and you're plucking the strings with that hand. So obviously your left and right hands are doing completely different things. If you were doing fractionization on, let's say, guitar playing, you might be practicing what your left hand does by itself. You wouldn't be plucking it with your right hand, plucking the strings, you'd just be practicing with the left hand. And then you might do the same thing with the right hand, but again, you should always bring those components back together because again, in real life, you don't just use your left hand to play guitar, you use both hands. Same thing goes with any stringed instrument or any motor skill that you can do that with for that matter. All right, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the differences between whole and part practice. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.